bit of a session zero for our next big campaign. I actually need to... I, I'm, I'll yes. be back. I need to talk to my sister about something. All right, go ahead. She needs advice on the new computer. Go! She needs it today. Fly! Um, fly, you fools! Fly. Um, so, today, uh, we're, we're going to be using some of the witchcraft stuff. And we're going to teach you guys how to craft stuff. Awesome. Now that yeah. you've taken the time to make your characters, uh, we're gonna get an introduction to each of those each of those peoples. All right. So who should we start with? Uh, let's start with Jordan. <laughs> um, no. So I think we will actually. I'm opposite of starting with Jordan. So we're going to start. Uh, I want to I want to teach you guys about a few of the things in here. We will start. Uh, no, let me let me transport you to the setting first. Uh, in this world of Ahiri, there are a lot of dangerous things. There are dragons flying overhead. There are giants raging in the northern continent of Karats. Karas, where we have previously been, where the Silver Arrows waged war on giants and vice versa, where a bunch of stalwart adventurers delved into a lich's tomb, facing mm -hmm. death and destruction, where goblins ride war elephants and do wrestling matches. Hell yeah. <laughs> Where a group of angry people firing crossbow bolts bemuses local militia forces. Uh, <laughs> far from all of that, there is a small island a bit close to the equator. It is a beautiful, verdant island called Cape Verdigree. And from a bird's eye view of this place, it has a very large volcano at its center. This volcano is not active. And in fact, on, on its peak, we can see there is a crater, not filled with the heated glow of lava, but reflective black water. And in the middle of that, a tower. We also see three other settlements peppered onto this island, uh, otherwise breaking up the rainforest and beaches present on this beautiful little island. The people who live there and elsewhere know them as Cascade, Silverstruck, and Tapestry Hill. And we're going to visit each of those places today. Okay. Well. We buy it. Yes. We will start in the little village of Tapestry Hills, which is a collection of homesteads and farms on beautiful uh, green pastures. There are kites flying, there are seagulls flying overhead, looping among the kites and flags. Windmills seem to be a very common uh, part of a lot of the homesteads here uh, that look over the cliffs below. This is where we find a young human man in very nice clothes. Uh, please, Jonathan, describe to us Caspian Fallowfield. So, uh, Caspian is a uh, uh, rather young man um, in his early 20s, I'd say. Uh, very handsome youth. Uh, thin, um, somewhat tall, he almost has, um, almost has elfin features a little bit. Uh, 
he has green eyes from his father and platinum blonde hair from his mother. Uh, he wears uh, a billowing kind of almost open at the top, a billowing um, shirt and uh, leather pants, shiny black boots. He's got a uh, shoulder cape over one of his shoulders and a wide brimmed cap with a, with a uh, green and purple feather kind of poofing out of the top. Uh, also, he has um, a long looking uh, sword on one of his hips as well as a book and on the other side is what looks to be a long handled, uh, almost looks like a a half of uh, a half of a sword with um, with guards at the top, but there's no blade. All right, Caspian, you and your your shiny boots and your your fresh attire have just arrived here from the school of Inkwell Peak up on top of the mountain. And you have arrived at this farm, and there's there's a fellow uh, in overalls who's sitting on the fence. He's like, "You that school witch? What done gone gone? Come here and apprentice under under uh, under Jess." I might be. All right, good. Got some work for you. I'm Rohan. <laughs> Rohan. Excellent. Uh, perhaps you can help me carry some of my baggage. You're carrying it just fine. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Get you set up in you your living see, quarters. <laughs> you can see kind of two suitcases kind of almost look like they're floating in air following me. Uh, as my unseen servant kind of toddles after me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm back. Uh, okay, cool. Um, we are being introduced to Caspian Followfield, oh. this noble human with platinum blonde hair and very fancy clothes and a feathered cap. Uh, as he follows this this uh, middle-aged man, you would say, wearing overalls, into a, a, a nice little homely farmstead. Homestead. Hey, Jess! Your new apprentice is here! It's, uh... Quaint, your place. Oh, sure. <laughs> thanks. A like, very, all right. Very uh, nice uh, thank you. This, this woman steps in. She's she's also middle aged. She's she's blonde. She looks. She just has a really kind, nice face. Very round face. She's like, all right, honey, welcome. It's gonna be so nice working with you. I know how hard it is to get apprenticeships for some of y'all working up at that school. Don't worry, I've done this before. I'm under your tutelage. And I kind of do a deep uh, bow. <laughs> like, I sweep the hat. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of like slaps um, the other guy in the face a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shucks. You don't have to worry about none of that. Come on. Let me show you to your room and then we'll get you set up with some dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and she opens the door and there's... Uh, not an especially large room by your standards. Oh, uh, is this the uh, changing room? It's not. It's it's oh my a God. bedroom. <laughs> it has a dresser <laughs> and a bed. Uh, but it's like it's kind of close to the ground. It doesn't. It's not like. It's not a queen sized. It's a single. Yeah. Like, I uh, under my breath say. This will build character. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh my god, I love it. Uh, <laughs> and then I, I like step aside and those two suitcases kind of tuddle in. <laughs> like yeah, your unseen servant drops the suitcases. So fucking good. That's great. I... That was amazing. And you you hear a strange noise that no doubt was bellowed by some be oh. You're like part of your mind is like 
Yeah, Holy shit, good. that was really good. <laughs> I look out the window. Is there a window? You, there is a window. You're not yeah. Harry Potter. You're not living under the staircase. Like, yeah. I'm not doing it. <laughs> you, In his mind. You, you open the window, the latch is a little bit rusty. Which, uh, so you have to like... <sighs> and you see right outside your window, there's a cow. <laughs> you don't know if you've ever seen one this close. Uh, <laughs> Roll a nature check to determine where it is. Nice. Oh my god, that's great. I, uh, <laughs> I sniff the air and I kind of wrinkle my nose and I close the window. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. I gotta let the cat out. <laughs> and that's enough of that. Get out of here. <laughs> there we go. Goodbye. Okay, Bye. so Caspian. Uh, you spend uh, quite some time, not not like a year or anything, but a, a couple weeks uh, apprenticing under... Rassing it, as they say. Yes. Uh, you apprentice under Jess Brennan uh, for for your, uh, your stay. This is a common practice for those who study at Inkwell Peak, you know, because uh, it, it, the, the, the school does teach you regular magic, regular wizardry, but they specifically have a focus on domestic magic. Uh, and one of the rules is that you have to apprentice under a craftsperson for one year uh, before you can before you can basically like proceed with normal studies again. Uh, so that is what you do for a while. <laughs> Maybe you do spend a year there. I don't know. I think actually you might... Yeah, I think... I think this happens in maybe the fall. Okay. Okay? So, like, maybe we get in a good amount of time. Um, something like that. Uh, so this will be some months before the adventure begins. Uh... We now pan over away from the idyllic tapestry hills to a lovely looking beach town called Cascade, filled with all kinds of nice little resort type locations, uh, beautifully managed shops. Uh, all over the place, you see people wearing kind of uh, pointy stereo... Did everyone freeze? Everyone froze for me. Ooh. Oh, no, my internet. <laughs> All right. Okay, cool. Oh, you uh, got it! Is back, so, where was I? Uh, how much did I you guys know. get? Oh, well. Before, oh. I, lo before I was... Wait, give me a second. Out. I think I saw cats. I don't remember. Um, By the way, what's her talking about, uh, What? You're setting uh, up Caspian. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, we got. Did it go again? Is everyone there? What's happening? Who do? Who do? Who do? Do, do, do what? Remind me. me okay. So, me. Uh, so. I'm hot as babe could cry. Okay, so I'm going to start again. Um, oh. <laughs> so. Uh, we we shift over from idyllic tapestry hills to the lovely little resort beach town of Cascade. Cascade. Uh, witch hats and billowing cloaks are high fashion right now. Hell yeah. Uh, Cascade is... A lovely place with sparkling water, warm beaches, and bustling culture. It's seen as the face, if not the heart, of Cape Verde Greek. Uh, there's, it's it's a lovely little place with many many places worth visiting: cafes, bed and breakfasts, 
but uh, uh, one of the places that we are going to visit right now is the Brood Awakening. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. That's really cute. Thank That's you. always fun. Uh, I love the pun. Yes. Uh, so here we see uh, two elves lounging. Uh, it's it's probably like midday. Uh, the Brood awaking, uh, Awakening, unlike many of the places here, is a bar and kind of a microbrewery. Or full-on brewery, depending on what is possible. Uh, mm. I think there's a big back room. I think it's a brewery, too. Uh, <laughs> um, and we see two elves... Uh, lounging in the in the front room before they have to get back to one of them has to get back to work. Uh, Quinn and and Jordan, please describe to us Cedric and Billy. We will say. Um, um, yeah, Quinn, go first. Do you want to go first, Jordan, or? Um, no, you can go first. Okay. Um, Billy is an elf. Uh, moon elf. Um, so bluish skin. Bluish skin. Um, kind of purple hair. Um, not sure if that's real or dyed, but um, definitely purple hair. Whatever black berries. Um, and they are uh just kind of slight. Um. And I think, I don't know what color eyes moon elves have. That is entirely up to you. Do whatever you want. Okay, I think it's kind of like a deep blue gray. Um, but the thing is, she can't see. So she's blind. Um, or they are blind. I, I can't, I can't, like, I don't know. They started out a girl in my head. So if I say she, it's it's not right um okay. they are they um and yeah uh, they they are definitely women, even though it's probably a hideous color um they don't know <laughs> it looks hideous on them but um they're definitely wearing a witch hat fashion yes you have a hurdy-gurdy i do have a hurdy-gurdy mm -hmm. What's a hurdy gurdy? I have to Google it. <laughs> it's a type of instrument. It's a cranking musical box, basically. I do have a hurdy gurdy. Okay. That is an interesting looking instrument. Let me look. And I complex. Don't know what it looks like. Let me look. It's yeah. a stringed instrument that produces sound by a hand crank turned. Yeah. Rose, r rosen? Yeah. Rose. Rosened, Rosened. wheel rubbing against the strings. The wheel functions much like a violin bow. So yeah. that's why this instrument sounds similar. A strange Rosened. instrument that only a gnome could have conceived. <laughs> it's yes, I honestly, have it also kind of look. It looks like it has piano keys in it. Yeah. Yeah. So no, funny. I have a hurdy gurdy. It's it's like a little. It's it's really cool, and I play it well. I am a bard, by the way. All right. Uh, and then sitting with Billy. Uh, it looks like, a, like an assassin's weapon. <laughs> like it's going to have a hidden crossbow in it. I will play the song of your day. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Winter's what I mean. Yep. All right. Uh, Jordan, please describe to us Cedric. Uh, so yeah, Cedric is a wood elf. He's actually not too short for an elf. Um, a slim build. He His skin is copper with hints of green in it. He has brown hair and green eyes, and he's wearing essentially common clothes. All right, yeah. You two are chilling in the, the Brood Awakening. Probably has some form of flask with him. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the owner and proprietor of this place, Heckle, 
comes out, heck of a little barrel. Uh, it, it, uh, they are a, they are a dwarf, short and stout. Um, <laughs> raise my hand, Here is my stout. Couldn't help yourself. Nope. Uh, and uh, they come out and they're like, it's like, Ari, Cedric, time to get back to work. Today's brewing is going to be on you. Okay. Hey, let me but, just. But, uh, <laughs> all right. All right. So you, I, I want a new dancing song just for the patrons, just like you promised. <laughs> However, <laughs> uh, so uh, you know, that's not the voice. I'm just grunting. You two, and and we're gonna get to all of you. All of you are going to do a crafting project at some point. We're gonna start with these two. Uh, so you guys. Uh, need to craft a difficulty level one project. Okay, hold on. I, I drop all my dice. So what no, that means is small. it's the simplest project to make. Do, 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 do. Jeez. So. All right. So, uh, one Heckle D6, takes right? you into the, the brewery section, uh, uh, Cedric, okay. and they're, they go, okay. So, what we need you, the, the first step is the blueprint. In this case, Heckle is proposing the project. So, it's like, we're going to start by making a grey water stout, which you know is basically, it's, it's crappy light beer, but you know what? It's got... <laughs> You gotta start simple. Uh, the challenge, it's difficulty level one. The base materials you will need are the hops and grains. Uh, which normally this would be the part where you are gathering them. So it says, alright, go get everything we need. And if you want to try and make something special, that's entirely up to you. So basically, if you want to try getting crazy with it and making some kind of flavored beer, do it. you're getting free reign to do so. All right, I might as well try. All right. So base materials, you grab the hops, you grab the grains, you grab the water, you grab other things that are required to make beer. <laughs> <laughs> is there a special ingredient you would like to try to use uh, let's see so I'm going to impose a couple checks actually um, but yeah like if, if you can think of something absolutely oh there's some gum on the floor I will probably need dice at some point won't I yes that would be helpful dungeon master is prepared I have suggestions. You're not getting them. This is about your own self-expression and creativity. Well, For once I'm keeping my mouth shut. Um, let's see. It's a lot of fruit laying about. Oh, I could make an. I could essentially make an apple. <laughs> make um, a mango beer. A mango beer. Yeah. Mango card. Make a beer using chocolate. There's a good, there are good you know? coffee hops. As well. Bacon. Oh. Can't believe I didn't think of this. Orange peels. Huh? You want to use orange peels? Yeah, I like orange. Okay, stuff. orange beer. I like it. I actually don't like, I, I'm imagining in my brain. I kind of like it. Um, <laughs> all right, so. Getting the oranges, uh, orange peels, is step one. I need you to make, uh, we're going to call this a perception check. 
All right. In in the the interesting organization that Heckle has in this back room, finding things is not always easy for people who are not Heckle. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad, not bad. That is a 19. All right. You managed to find the oranges. So, like, Cedric, like, goes over to the shelf, reaches up. da na 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 All right. You and you begin uh, working on uh, that beer you begin brewing stuff up and you incorporate the orange slices the orange or the orange peels uh and i will consider that high quality materials mm -hmm. even though it's supposed to be not easily acquired from a shop but we're streamlining the process <laughs> god damn it <laughs> <laughs> all right so we're gonna I skip understand. So, uh, and this is also the preparation stage. So this is where you yeah. can get any of the other things. You can sacrifice something. I don't know if you want to do that right now. Just start cutting my hand. No. It's like the, the blood orange beer. Like, and he's like, okay, you're fired. You can't no do that. Just say red. Don't worry, the alcohol. Will I wasn't going to fire you before scary. today, but now I am. That's what's hap That's how today is gone. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, generosity, you can't do that. This isn't a gift for someone else. You can get assistance or knowledge, which is studying the subject in advance, either from source materials or an NPC mentor, or recruiting a fellow player or NPC of appropriate complementary skill to lend a hand. The NPC must be different from your mentor, if you have one, and the skill could not be identical to your own. Um, could I help? What would you do to help, though? What is your crafting? Oh, I'm a composer. Okay. <laughs> that, that helps with beer. I can make you a really cool song to you listen to while you're, while you're making the beer. Just like, I can play it for you and you're just like, damn, this is a good hurdy-gurdy song. As a composer, would you be able to write down a recipe? No, no, no. I, I, I got it. If I might, inter I might intervene, I got. I, I know what Quinn's character could do. They're blind, right? Yes. Quinn's character. That means all their other senses are amplified. Oh my god! I could taste that. Them. Exactly. Okay. High five. As yeah. far as the note, note taking goes, I just like the idea. You're like, all right, give me the recipe, and they're like, here, and they hand it to you proudly, and you're like, shit, this it's is in dogs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'll write it down for you, and I will taste test as well. Um. Okay. I mean, it's not gonna be ready for a while. All right. But you you write it down for. So I'll consider that assistance. Okay. Uh, I'm recording my work. Sorry for that motorcycle in the background. It's all good. Um, is that all you wish to do? I think so. I'm not sure what I can do for a sacrifice right now. You can't do sacrifice, I don't think, and you can't do generosity. The only other not, one. I can't even do a ritual sacrifice. Darn it. You can't. No sac. Heckle is watching you. You cannot <laughs> sacrifice. Like. Anything that is not organic material that, like, should or could go in a beer without the health and safety department shutting you guys down <laughs> will not go in that beer. <laughs> so start throwing all the items in there. If a single, if your beer. hands get, look like they, like a nail could even possibly end up in that beer, Heckle will throw you out. <laughs> Oh my god. I use my winter blanket. Like, I give up my childhood blankie as a sacrifice. Like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's a sacrifice. I need to get out of the fucking beer. <laughs> I just put echo in the beer. 
I don't doubt that it'll give people a ratatouille moment where they like fucking flashback to their childhood blankies or whatever some shit. Look at that fucking goddamn gross ass rag out of the alcohol. Okay. So um, yeah, I I have nothing I'm else. Saying, to do. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. I'm gonna check something. I don't know if Bardic Inspiration will apply here. Dang it. Uh, you knew what I was checking. <laughs> All right, so I think that's it for preparation. All right, you have assistance and high quality materials. Uh, so the preparation is underway. You can begin the crafting attempt. So you must beat the crafting DC, which I believe do, 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 is for 10. A, for a, yeah, for a one, it is the difficulty level times five plus five, so 10. Is it? So you get to roll one, two, two extra dice. Okay. Is it an ability check? It so, is. My question is, plus toolkit modifier and proficiency. What would be my toolkit modifier for brewer's supplies? So that is an interesting question. Um, so... I I will say I think I think it would be a mental skill okay. like you're measuring the ingredients so I'll say intelligence or wisdom and that's up to you I will go with wisdom because I'm a monk that's the and it's going to be the wisdom <laughs> um, so then okay so that would be fine so 36 plus 5 let's try this that is good. Okay. That's 14. Bless you. All right. Thank you. You succeed with flying colors, as far as you know. You guys, you you brew it. You spend the better part of your day or, or longer. Actually, how long would this fucking take? This is where stamina comes into it. I have ignored stamina a lot, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's based on the how size long, of the project. How long does this take? I think Tier one will grant a total of three stamina at a rate of one stamina per difficulty level, multiplied by the project size. Minimum of one. So the project size, I think, is actually... Uh, we're going to call this a medium vat. <laughs> okay. One stamina per difficulty two level. So that takes up two So that's stamina. one times two. So it's a, So it's two. So you are able to actually get this done in one day. <laughs> With two of your stamina. Yeah. Uh, work. Yeah, you spend the better part of your day crafting, brewing, while Billy takes down notes. Billy! Billy! He's the Billy. richest boy ever! Oh my gosh. Who cast the Lich King down? <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God! Yeah. yeah oh, I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one who thinks about it. Like, oh. Billy. Also, he fought a bear. <laughs> oh, I did not. Okay, I didn't get any sixes or ones. It's Detroit Adventure Time. Okay. When they first meet. Have you guys seen the Night Gospel? Uh, what did you say, Jordan? I did not get any sixes or ones. You did not get any sixes or ones, which means. We do not get to do, uh, so we're on the appraisal section. Any flaws or boons are canceled out. It's time to appraise. Uh, that, that would be the fine tuning section. So no sixes or ones means we don't fine tune, which would mean you would get, we're, we're actually going to reach that with some of you guys actually probably. We're going to see flaws and boons. Uh, Quinn. Yes. Billy should be working on a song during all this. All right. All right. You just got to do a little bar tune to, that all people right. can dance to. I feel like I'm going to do that. But I want to make it so that it goes along with the beer that he's making. So, like, <laughs> like it okay. makes things taste good or something. 
I don't know if you can do that, but you can definitely make it about oranges or something. Yes. <laughs> All right. If you want some, just yes. come and ask us. Okay. All right. So the blueprint. Into my song. Huh? I'm taking the notes and weaving them into my song. Okay. The challenge, it's going to be difficulty level one. DC is 10. Okay. Um, Beat that DC. So, step three preparation. Preparation. Okay. This is where you prepare. You can gain assistance. You can sacrifice something. Again, no one's sac. We're on this is session yeah. zero. We're just learning to do shit. No one sacrifice anything. Really. Yeah. Um. Okay. I mean, so, don't count the warlock yet. <laughs> um. What does that do? Oh. 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 Okay. Generosity, knowledge, and high high quality materials. Generosity, knowledge, and high quality materials. I feel like I have knowledge. You have to study the subject in advance. That's what knowledge is in this case. Oh, but I'm studying it with, with Jordan while I make the <laughs> beer. I mean, I'm not making the beer. I'm writing stuff down. I'm writing a lot of stuff down. Also, that is a assistance, point. they're tasting an orange-based alcohol. I will give you one or the other. <laughs> okay. Um, I feel like tasting would do better because, like, it's more intuitive, I guess. It's right. more inspirational. I will give you assistance for that. Okay. No, sorry. And then if you want knowledge, you have to go somewhere else for it. Okay. Um, would the instrument be considered a high quality material? And their mercy. Yeah, is the instrument a high quality material? Huh? Is the instrument a high quality material? The instru no. You have to get something new for high quality materials. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to the music shop then. Mm -hmm. And I, ooh, I don't know how much instruments are actually. Probably a lot. I can look it up if you want. You're, yeah. I'm. I'm oh man, that is a question of what the hell would be high quality materials for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have it here. I mean, All the instruments are, are like, for. They range from like depending on how simple or complex they are, but the complex ones well, like your hurdy gurdy range upwards of thirty gold or twenty five, and then okay. something like a flute would be like two you know yeah okay well i don't play air instruments i play string instruments yeah i which are inherently uh, more expensive well viol is also, actually a third also 30 gold what a viol is also 30 gold no what did harper say uh high quality materials are supposed to be things you can't easily acquire from a shop <laughs> oh okay then um one more do the strange smell in my room i need to figure out what that is okay you go do that um i don't know <laughs> what high quality materials would be in your circumstance what do you think i don't know that's the problem well okay I don't um think you'll be able to use high quality materials right now yeah. Maybe um I have no idea actually. So no high quality materials ever. Okay. Not ever, That's but just not right now. I'll think on it. Okay. But also you can't afford yeah. the instruments. No, I know. I Hurdy gurdy. That's and then fine. that could potentially end up being a high quality materials for all time thing. I mean, you're back to the bonus. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, what's the next one? I mean, there's knowledge, high quality materials, assistance, sacrifice, and generosity. 
All right. Um, what do you have to do to get uh, generosity? What is that? You do it. It's the thought that counts. You will always gain a benefit whenever the item is being crafted for someone else, as the act of consideration makes domestic magic more powerful. This does not apply when the item is going to be sold or has been commissioned. Gosh. I'm oh, so it doesn't work, Because huh? it's been commissioned. A little bit. Okay. Um, knowledge. As far as knowledge, I think I'll... Uh, I can good. I, like, go somewhere and, like, listen to... Oh, this is hard. Um, okay. You want to listen uh, to another musician? Um, yeah, yeah. And then just copy their shit. And just no. maybe just talk to them for a bit. Yeah. See okay. if they've ever. There, there are them. other musicians in in Cascade. Mm -hmm. uh, who would you like to talk to? Is there a particular? I mean, bird? no. Huh? I mean, not really. I don't know who I know. I will say the one that strikes out at me from reading about Cascade. Yeah. It's Professor Dentures. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's go talk to Professor Dentures. All right. You walk down the boulevard, you pass the snack sized and. Mm -hmm. uh, you make your way down past saltwater tabbies, and you end up at the Happiness Hotel, the which happiness. is a, a three-storied graffitied hostel uh, where many okay. starving artists, thespians, and travelers on a shoestring budget stay. And you see there's a goblin with very long arms who's wearing a, a rakish cap with a feather in it, and he's got mm -hmm. a violin, and he's playing for his patrons. I follow the sound and I come up and I'm like um, I, I start harmonizing with him. I'm a hurdy gurdy. Awesome. Make a performance check to All harmonize right. with Professor Ventures. Alright, let me find my performance. Okay. Where is it? Oh there it is. Okay, that's a 17 plus 4, so... Yes, amazing. Yeah, Yay. Professor Dentures gives you a big, gigantic, kind of nasty-looking goblin smile. He has a very that big I smile. See. <laughs> <laughs> that I can't see. Uh, yeah, that you cannot see, but you feel the smile. Um, okay, it's so big, I feel it. It's, uh, that's the thing about Professor Dentures, is that he has a smile so large that everyone you don't even have to see it to know it's there. Um, uh, but after he finishes the set, he comes over to you, and it's like, ah, Billy, yes, what can Professor Dentures do for you? <laughs> I am writing a song about oranges, and I'm hoping that you can impart some wisdom from your amazing compositions to me. You want a fucking bop? <laughs> Yes, I do want to bop. I will tell you what, after that performance, make it all my patrons rowdy. I'll give you some bits of, tidbits of advice. Okay. So here's what I think we can do. Because this is based, uh, and he spends uh, some time with you, Tyler, and you're like, it's like, yeah. it's like, it's a little bit of an ad, but it doesn't have to be an ad. And you can make it your own thing and blah, blah. And, uh, yeah. So you have knowledge. So you can yes. start making... So that's 2d6 so far, right? You have 2d6. Okay. The DC is 10. Okay. You have a mod as well, don't you? You also have your modifier. That's all I can get, right? Huh? That's all I can get, right? That's all uh, that's... Yeah, kind of. Okay. So I have one for assistance and one for knowledge. Yes. Do I get one to start off with? Yes. Okay, so 3d6. 3d6. Plus a mod. All right. All right, that's six, three, and three. So 12. 
All right. Did it. Plus that also, whatever. That's also plus your uh, your modifier from proficiency, and this would be charisma. Um, okay. Proficiency and charisma. Uh, I believe. I believe, yeah. I don't know. I Did put my highest. Plus, oh, oh, I put my highest modifier and proficiency you might have. Okay, so maybe not. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, modifier and proficiency are always added. Okay, so yes, you, you crafted a good jaunty dancing tune about orange groves and orange trees and orange beer. Um, yeah. Uh, you spend the better part of the day on that. You come back. You're ready to play. Yeah. And I got a six. Does that mean something? You got a six. So what that means is when we are we are going to go to the fine tuning section. Yay. Uh so fine tuning, you got a d you got a six. If you had gotten a one, we would have to add a flaw to the thing. You got a six. So we get to add six. we get to add a boon. Yes. So okay. blah 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 blah. Um, okay. So we are going to add a minor boon to this right. song. And this is a simple one. So we're gonna say uh hmm, for a song. I'm sorry, I made it really hard. <laughs> you did. You made the fucking hardest goddamn fucking metaphysical goddamn crafting class you could have made, didn't you? Uh, we're gonna say it's catchy. Okay. It's catchy. It gets stuck in people's heads. Yes. But is it good? It's good. Yeah, it's a good song. Okay, cool. Because catchy doesn't always mean good, you know? Yeah. Whatever. But this one's catchy and good. Yeah. You know, I think that's actually like what you want with a song, something catchy and good so that yeah. people will constantly hear it and then go over to your house to pay you to stop hearing it. Yeah. All right. So appraisal. It's all good. Uh, you have finished. Yay. All right. So you go back to Heckles later that day. You try out your song for the first time. You're playing yeah. it and people are... Yeah, it. it's a good time. Uh, yeah. Cedric, you hear all the clapping and dancing outside, and you're wiping off your brow, like seal the cask, and uh, you have maturity, so it'll be ready sooner than normal. I'm gonna check the specifics on that. How much stamina did we spend? You guys spent two each. I think I think stamina is is a non-issue at the moment. Okay. I think you're all going to be working on projects that are not huge. Yeah. At the moment. Um. Three times the natural rate. Yeah, that's gonna be fucking. Yeah, that beer's gonna be ready in no time. Um. <laughs> uh. All right. Next up. Well, yeah. Also, it comes to maturation, like just about immediately looks like from uh yeah whenever you craft something that gets Three better with age rustic right. magic creates it reasonably matured and ready to use further maturation occurs at three times the natural rate increases the quality of item accordingly further maturation okay reason all right awesome yeah you serve out some of your your orange beer that night yeah i feel like i'm playing the song and people are like, where is the orange beer? And I'm like, And then Cedric brings it out. Direction. Ah, and people are drinking it. They're having a good time. Heckle is like raking in the coins. He's like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> um, Heckle is Mr. Krabs. Uh, yeah, confirmed. Um, next Maturity up. Excellent for brewing. Uh, next up. Yes. Who's next? We pan over from Cascade. Sir, uh, 
where where people where night is just starting to the city of Silverstruck. It is a city of industry, the capital of Cape Verdegree, many continue uh, many believe it to be. Uh, it's much larger than Tapestry Hills and and Cascade. And you can often you can see smoke pluming out from certain parts of it. Uh, you can see, but we we zoom in on our and you can see the the streets aren't paved with gold. That would be highly inefficient. But the lamp posts <laughs> are plated with silver. Um, wow. And along the cobblestone streaks streets, we follow them to a particular section of Silverstruck called the Salamander. It is built inside an old lava tube, and it is called so because of the fiery orange lights of all the forges uh, that are contained within. And we find ourselves at a smithy with a sign outside that simply says, The Anvil. And in here, we see a white dragonborn who looks like this. Yeah, that's cool. Huh. Yeah. Working away at something. And uh, stepping in through the door, Mads, please describe Grania to us. Okay. Uh, Grania, she... Um, has, like, a fairly athletic build. She has dark skin, dark hair. It's shaved on one side and, like, but, like, long and curly on the other. She's that? dressed in all black. She's edgy. Because mm. I get to, I, Dad said it's my turn to be the edge lord. Um, and she, her eyes are very, very pale green. Um, yeah, she's cool. She looks rad. All right. So Sounds Grania rad. comes in and Ergid, your, your mentor, the white dragonborn depicted here, it's like, Grania. Hmm. Mm. Got a job for you. Repair job. And he finishes up his work. Which sometimes which takes a couple minutes, but he speaks in his own time. See this sword. And he points to his sword, you see, and it's nicked up to hell. Uh it's pretty beaten up. It's pretty bad. What did you do to it? I didn't do anything to it. It's <laughs> someone else's. And you see, like, good... There's a section where good chunks of it have, were, are actually removed, and the chunks have been taken off. Hmm. That's your job for today. Repair it. <laughs> Fine. Cool. I'll, I'll fix the sword. What's it made out of? It is a it is a simple steel sword. Ooh. Okay. Well, I put on gloves to handle it. All right. And yeah, we get we get going. All right. So yeah, you begin. Uh, so project fixing a sword. So this is a thing. Uh, it's basically going to function exactly the same as a crafting attempt. But this is okay. not a crafting. This is a repair. Okay. This is to let you guys know you can, you don't have to just make things. You can fix things. Grand. I don't know how I can fix things. Alcohol. Okay. Someone made a beer and it now broke. I can fix it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan and I are kind of like, um, all right. There is also general crafting and general repairs that you guys can do without having proficiency in that particular type of trade. That will take some slightly different rules. I considered having one person do that, but I want you guys to all to learn how to do the damn crafting. So I opted not to do that. Um, so well, if you guys enough. do want to do something that you guys, your trade can't do, that is an option. Yeah. 
Cool. What is happening in front of my house? What is oh, I'm happening? Sorry. Who's that sleeping in my bed? They're having a Star Wars parade without sorry. me. I hear oh, a motor. Yeah. Of course, you guys. It might be gardeners. Uh, I'm unsure. The, the blueprint. <laughs> fix this sword. Challenge. This is going to be a. Normally, the DC, the DC no, is less for repairs, but we're going to say a steel sword is maybe a, a DL2, and then like a iron sword would be difficulty one. Just so you're actually like, so this isn't a difficulty zero project, and you actually get to roll dice. I don't work with iron. It's steel. Oh. Yes, but you just because an example you used iron yeah. and I went no I don't work with iron often. Okay. <laughs> Why? Iron is in steel. That is I the nature of metal. It is an iron alloy. Uh, <laughs> or whatever. Um, I said I put on gloves. All right. You're not hard. <laughs> whatever. What? What do you have against iron? I hate it. Why? I just do. Isn't iron like the basis for metallurgy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, you're like that one person who hates salt. Don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. I'm edgy. Uh, so we begin preparation. Oh. I called him practical. Okay. So preparation. <laughs> uh, you get to choose. Do you want to try to get Air Geed's help with knowledge? High yeah. quality materials, do you, uh, assistance, sacrifice, or generosity? I don't generosity know. I feel like my mentor is right so that's there. Not an option. Hmm? My mentor is right there. He could probably like give me some pointers, right? He can. Would you like to make a persuasion check to get him to pull himself away from his work? Yeah. Help me. Ooh. Come have a look at this, I say. Is With that tone. Really Jeez, so demanding. Uh, 18. All right. Oh, damn. He comes and takes a look at it. It's like, mm. there's a bit more chipping at the bottom that wasn't immediately noticeable. We don't want to have to go over the whole blade, not just the bit at the top. Also, watch out for that handle. It's loose. Hi. All right, so yeah, uh, you now have knowledge. Great. Knowledge is power. All right, well. Knowledge is half the battle. <laughs> That's what okay. they say. All right, do you want to go in with just that one thing, or are you good? Um, I feel like... I don't know. I feel like that's pretty good, right? It's a pretty low... Like, it's low stakes. I don't know how... You got two D six plus your uh, your mod proficiency bon bonus plus uh for blacksmithing. Would it have to be strong? What is your strength? Your strength isn't great, is it? It's a negative one. Okay. Mm. Um, we don't want to use that for you. Uh, what's your dex hey. looking like? This is handwork. Uh, my dex is plus two. Okay, you can use dex for this. Cool, okay. So 2d6 plus four. 2d6 plus four, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't do it, I got a nine. Okay. I got a four, a one, and then plus four. So. I suck, this sword. So what did you, you got a nine so we're going to use the variant rule of desperate measures if you'd like okay sometimes a project is so close to coming together with this variant rule you can take a flaw or lose a boon during the fine tuning stage in exchange for plus three to your craft roll you can do this once per crafting attempt okay yeah great i'll do that all right you get the job done at the cost 
of there being a flaw. Okay. Was, oh, wouldn't it be two flaws? Or I did it? I did roll a one. You did roll a one. Okay. Yeah. So there's two flaws. There's two flaws on this sword. But the oh. sword is fixed. The sword is fixed. Damn it. But it, you know, it explodes. Uh, so yeah, you finish up. Ergi like lumbers over, looks it over. Uh, it's still kind of hot, and he just kind of like breathes on it, and it cools down. Um, one of the flaws is going to be it looks bad because minor flaws are cosmetic. Although, wait, where's the rules for how they stack? Where's the rules for them stacking? Um, well, how many flaws are there? There's two. two. So, okay, so you it'd be one flaw, but it'd be stronger, I believe. Okay, yeah, so it will, it is a substantial flaw. Like core balance, maybe, on the sword? Yes, that is substantial. Okay. So this is has a mechanical feature that makes it perform better or worse than expected. So yeah, um, he he looks at this sword and he goes, hmm. fixed. But you use too much steel in it. It's top heavy now. And he like balances it on his hand. And you see it like he balances it from the middle and it like falls <laughs> towards the top. It's towards not. the edge of the blade. That's not sad you want to be heavy. <laughs> yeah. But the gloves. We will work on this more tomorrow. Yes. Go home. Get sleep. Okay. More work tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> Man, a few words that air gave. Um. And you, you go home. Uh, do you, do you think do you think you live with? Your family, or do you have your own apartment now, at this point? Um. You sound like a New Yorker all of a sudden. Because I yeah. can, Andy. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, um. Maybe I still live with my mom. All right. Your mom yeah, lives. Yeah, I still live with my mom. Your mom lives in Silverstruck. Yeah. So yeah, you get home. Uh, uh, you 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 had left the shop and come in to drop off some stuff that Eric had ordered, and that's so you were there all day except for picking up the order, um, and then doing that work. Uh, but you come home, and your mother's still up drinking some tea. She's like, "How was work, dearie?" Claude? Huh? What'd you say? I, I said flawed. It's all right. If every like not everything in the world can be perfect. Sometimes You almost said if every pork chop were perfect, we wouldn't have hot dogs. Yeah, I, almost, I was like that close to saying that. I was like, I can't do that, but like. <laughs> but that's the that's, sentiment. Yes. If the world yeah. didn't have flaws, no one would care about the good things in the world. Mm. You'll do better. I know you got it into it. Whatever you set your mind to, you can do it. Thanks, Ma. Now go wash up. You smell like a you smell like a the furnace. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
and we, fa we, we, we are going to step away from Silverstruck. In fact, we're stepping away from all of Cape Verdigree for a moment. And we are traveling over the ocean to a different island. We see the island of Snoot. <laughs> <laughs> I love that name. <laughs> and on this island, there is a fort. Uh, where we see we see many turtles. It's a different day now. It's daytime. Uh, it is a sunny day, sunny afternoon, and we see many turtles working on the, uh, around this fort. Some of them are talking with human traders. Uh, uh, some of them are uh, talking amongst themselves. And there's one in per uh, one in particular who we see. Uh, sitting up on a, a guard post for the moment, an old abandoned guard post. The turtles have taken over this fort, which is known as Ahoy Hoy. <laughs> uh, abandoned Amazing. long ago by whoever made it, they've made it theirs. No one lives here full time as, tormat uh, as turtles are pretty nomadic, but a lot of turtles pass in and out of this place and they've made it their own. They come here to lay eggs, socialize, and trade with people, merchants, or themselves. Please describe to us, Andy, Urn. So, uh, Urn is a, I guess, like, how how old are, can turtles get in our thing? Do we change say, it or no? I say turtles can get to be a couple hundred years old. Okay. Old well, yeah, he's uh, relatively, like, I want to say middle age, about, like, a hundred and... 50-ish, 160-ish. I don't know. I'm going with the idea that turtles live to be around 300. That works for me. Anyways. Yeah. And, uh... I'd say 400 in some cases. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he looks a lot older than, you know, the, what most people would think a uh, younger turtle would look like just yeah. because turtles tend to be... Turtles tend to be very wrinkly, very elderly looking. Mm -hmm. It's a very colorful shell with, a. Uh, uh, we have a very colorful shell with a bright yellow coloration and like uh, uh, black and brown stripes, kind of like um, kind of just on the various uh, tiles that make up the shells, kind of like a giant, uh, like a golden star tortoise, I guess. Oh, cool. Uh, and he also carries around a lot of various bottles that are attached to like uh, strings that are just kind of hammered on like are the Attached to like chains and strings are just hammered into a shell. He also has various instruments he keeps just in pouches that are again just kind of attached to his shell. He basically just turned his entire shell into a mobile workshop for him, Which so he doesn't need to like go anywhere. Here. They carry all. Yeah. Their lives are on your shell. Exactly. Like again, it's like we're, we have our shells. I mean, hammering stuff doesn't hammering stuff into the shells don't really hurt us. No, hammering that stuff much. into the shell would hurt. Like, I mean, I mean, like, not, your body. it's not too, not too deeply, you know, it's like kind of a trick thing, getting a piercing or something. I guess that's a thing you can do. <laughs> yeah. That's part of, like, the thing is with real turtles, like, that's part of their, that's connected to their spine, dude. Yeah, I know, but, eh. It's like, kind of weird that I don't pay attention to this just because I love turtles. They're like my favorite animal. Yeah. But yeah, um. My name, yeah, my, yeah, my name's Ern. I am the last member of my bloodline, so, and I still try to make a living just uh, selling uh, various potions and alchemical items to um, uh, anyone who's willing to buy, yeah. so I can make a small living. You make a lot of herbal things. You make, you make, you make things to help people with disease, uh, salves, yeah. ointments, all kinds of stuff. Basically, like, generally, like, a lot of a lot of natural remedies. Yeah. Um, like, uh, which, which, you know, like, uh, are, are a very important thing in this day and age, you know, like getting the right plants, the right mixtures, uh, knowing what you're doing. Um, so you're enjoying the sun on your, on your skin, the, the bright up sun in the sky. And then, uh, you hear one of the tor, one of the turtles, other turtles comes up to you and he's mm -hmm. like, Arr. 
I think some of the sailors could benefit from your assistance. Uh, do I know this portal? Uh, yeah, his name is... His name is uh, Mudgraw. Mudgraw? Yeah. Okay. He's like, yeah, he says, like, like they were pulling in their ships to come trade with us, and one of them got stung by a jelly. A jelly? A jelly. A jelly. Okay, well, I think I know what to do with that. Okie dokie. Where is this ship, my friend? Come on, they already made their way to here to the to a hoi hoi. Alrighty. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you you go you you step down, you go down some staircase, uh, the stone staircase here, and you're taken to a little section where you see there's a bit of a commotion. Uh, there's some some human sailors who who have come to trade with you guys, but there's one of them who's like clutching his leg in pain. He's like, ah, oh, no. And you see there's a big old red spot uh, that's swelling up a bit, where clearly he got stung by a jellyfish on his leg. Okay. I would like to, okay, so I'm going to go up to this guy. I'm just going to, are they letting me go up to him? Or huh? are they letting me, like, go up to this guy? Or Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go up to the guy, and I'm going to start examining the leg. I'm going to ask him uh, a few things first off. So, Sailor Man, where did you get this sting? I what kind of jellyfish? Water, water. <laughs> He's like, and his friend, his, oh. cat, his friend is like, uh, he was pulling in the dinghy and he got a uh, jelly stung him while he was, in, his legs are in the water. I see. Well, let me see what I can do, and I'm going to uh, quickly examine the uh, the sting wound in order to make sure, in order to see if I can actually do anything or not. Yeah. Make a medicine check. Okie dokie. Give me a sec. I need to find my thing. I oh, there like, it is. Like, you roll a natural one, and he's like, well, your friend got stung by a man of war, and he's going to mm. die. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to roll. Okie dokie. got a cudgel. This is a kindness. Let's see, what's my <laughs> modifier? It's going to be 21. Okay, yeah. Well, he got stung by a man of war. He's gonna die. No, I'm... <laughs> um, yeah, he got stung by a pretty common jellyfish. Uh, he will be fine, but you can definitely, like, there's a salve you can make to treat it and make it go down a lot quicker and take away a lot of the pain. Okay, well, I'm just going to look at the guy, and I'm just going to say, well, I have good news and bad news. Which one do you would like to hear first? Oh, good news. All right, I'll tell you the bad news first. Bad news is you're going to die. Oh, no! <laughs> good news is I'm lying about the fact that you're going to die. You're going to be A-OK. -okay. Why would you that. say that? <laughs> I think humor is the best medicine. What is wrong with you? Who does well, that? Okie <laughs> okay. okay, dokie, just give me a minute while I open up my little satchel of tricks. And I'm going to start, and I'm going to, uh, I guess, prepare to make this uh, salve. Yeah, you, you know what to do. Challenges. Do I, does it require one. any special ingredients? Uh, so special ingredients. You're using. Uh, we'll say stuff that you have on hand. Okay. Perhaps this is a thing you're ready for sometimes. Um, yeah. Uh, so this now we reach preparation. You spend time getting a high quality material. Knowledge from an NPC mentor or from source materials or assistance from an NPC. Sacrifice. Uh, you'd have to figure out something there. And generosity. Uh, hmm. uh, I mean, I guess... It, I mean, if I wanted to do it for free, I guess it could be considered generosity. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that would be generous. I, Hello? You know what? I'll accept generosity in that term. Yeah. But the thing is, like, but the thing is, uh, to my knowledge, we are trading something for the service. So I don't think it's going to be considered generosity. I mean, that they... they uh, uh, um, the trading. I mean, no one's offered to give you anything for this. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna do it anyways. Generosity, I guess. Okay. Okay. So, what do I have to roll? Would you like to acquire anything else, or are you good? You're ready to roll. Uh, well, first off, uh, I would like to acquire. Uh, see if I can't acquire any, maybe like. Uh, ingredients from the surrounding area that could also help uh, maybe lessen the pain of the sting while the salve is applied or maybe just like speed up the recovery process in, in any way rather okay. than just cure the sting pain. I think you know that if you can get I'm trying to think of a, an appropriate hard to find <laughs> item. And I want to point out, with high-quality materials, in the future, it's not going to be orange peels and, like, whatever bullshit I say. Like, it'll probably be, like, <laughs> some actual high-quality, like, it's like you need a shard of meteorite or a monster part. Um, I think in this case, for high-quality materials, for this very simple thing, uh, this jellyfish salve, um, you're going to need... Why not? I can do this. I'm the dungeon master. You're going to need some banana that's been chewed on by a monkey. <laughs> and okay. you know that there's monkeys in these jungle. Cool. So I will go look up to go find this monkey banana thing. And that will that will eat it. The monkey saliva mixed with the banana makes the swelling and it, it speeds up the healing process a lot. You don't know what it is that mixes with this potion, but it works, man. <laughs> Sure. So Why make not? A nature, works. Make a nature survival check to find the monkeys. Okay. And that is going to be survival check. That is going to be uh, nineteen. Nineteen. You find you find a group of monkeys sitting in a banana tree, eating away. Banana tree. They've, they've broken it open in half like the little savages that they are, eating it their way. Okay. What would you like to do? You have found them. Uh, now you okay. Must acquire. <laughs> right. Uh, so these. Uh, so I assume. Uh, uh, I assume one of these monkeys are chewing on a banana peel. Yeah. So right. I am going to cast magic stone. God, he's gonna kill the monkey. <laughs> I'm scared. And I am going to pick up a stone for our three pebbles from the ground. I was expecting to speak with animals or something. And then I will throw one at the monkey. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Go ahead. All right, and I will roll to throw a stone at the monkey. Uh, this is a wait. Let me check magic stone really quick. I need to figure out if I use my strength to throw or my spell modifier. Yeah, go right ahead, check it. Um, uh, magic. There we go, magic. It depends on how you throw it. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. It's a ranged spell attack, so I use my magic. Throw. I use my um, uh, yep, magic save or my magic Good. modifier. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Magic modifier. That's going to be uh. Okay. Uh, that is going to be a uh twenty nine. I didn't expect to have to use stats today, so I didn't have the monster book out. But I have a sneaking suspicion of the outcome. Uh, 
That's three hit points. Okay. Oh no. Um, go ahead and roll damage. All right, that's going Killing to be one uh, d. Okay. Well, uh, question is, um, the damage is equal to one d six plus my spell casting ability modifier, and I have a plus four. Okay, you kill a monkey. <gasps> Cool. Do, do I get that. the banana? Yeah, you get the banana. Cool, now I have a banana peel and dinner. Oh my god. Yes, I'm killing two monkeys with one stone. MV. What? <laughs> I just... I can't believe you've done this. It's quicker this way. A man's <laughs> life is in danger. If a monkey needed to die, the monkey will die. <laughs> so uh, I will I'm carry sorry, back. Everyone. I didn't know this was the path that we would end a up. A soul with. for a soul. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go back with the uh, banana peel and the. It was uh, Igor. Now, how do you feel? Oh. Well, here's the thing. Igor had the hunch. And also, if he it was Igor, he would just poof. So, you know. Well, now could, he's dead. I will so, neither confirm nor Igor. deny whether it's Ingo, Igor. <laughs> um, you you guys end up uh, you, yeah you uh, earn okay. you end up back at the Ahoy Hoy after your successful yes. hunting trip. Yes. Uh, and now you can craft. Yes, I will craft the potion. Craft like you've never crafted before. So you may, you may craft. You have high quality materials, if they could be considered such, and generosity. 2d6 plus proficiency plus this is. 2d6 proficiency. Okay. Medicine so it's 2d6. So I'll say you can use your wisdom, yes. Wisdom modifier. Okay. So, okay, so. Just to clarify, it's 2d6 plus my proficiency or wisdom modifier? Plus your proficiency bonus and your wisdom modifier. Oh, okay. So that's going to be plus 6 then. Okay, cool. That's going to be a 13. All right, you succeed. You make this, this simple salve with banana mixed in. Yes. Uh, and you... Yeah, so did you get any sixes or ones on your dice when you did that? Uh, no, I got a two and a five. Okay. All right, you get one more d6 because of just being a crafter. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, and that's going to be another two. Okay, so no boons or flaws. Um, but yeah, you, you have finished it. Okay. Would you like so, to uh, apply? yeah. I take that, I mush together all the things, make a little salve in my little mortar and pestle. Then I'm going to go up to the guy. I'm like, all righty then. I'm going to apply this onto your leg, and it will be painful. What? <laughs> wonderful it bedside be... manner, Andy. What? I said wonderful bedside manner. <laughs> what? what? Uh, Do you want me to lie to him? Yes. That's what yeah, his buddy hold his buddy, his sailor friend is holding his hand. He's like, "It's gonna be all right, Murray. I'm here with you." I suggest you put a cloth in your mouth to prevent any screaming, and oh. then I will take the thalve and apply it to the leg. Ah! <laughs> hmm. Oh, that feels good. Oh, well, it smells like banana. <laughs> yes. And I just up gently apply the south leg. I give it a quick patty pat down, and Ow. I will. <laughs> and then after that, um, I will wrap the uh, leg up in the various bandages to keep the south from you know washing off and all that. And after I don't know how long, I should be done. All right. Yeah. No. You. you up with that, you are. Good. You are now going to live. Oh, thank God. Thank you, Mr. Tornal. <laughs> you, no problem. All right. It's really chill. And we uh, we will now venture back from Ahoy Hoy back to Cape Verdigree, back to Tapestry Hills.
where we see this, uh, <laughs> where we yet again see Caspian Fallowfield. His boots are not as shiny as they once were in the weeks that have passed. Um, boots, shiny boots. I don't know if he would have taken the the blow to his ego that wearing simple farm clothes would entail and is perhaps still dressing very gaudily uh, for from his own farm wardrobe life, for farm life it's gaudy um, for Caspian it's dressing down <laughs> uh, but yeah you, you have been apprenticed to uh, to to Jess for some time uh and and a, a thing that <laughs> has apparently happened more than once has happened yet again this day and and Rohan comes in uh, and he's like it's like hey Caspian I hate to ask it of you but I ri I ripped my overalls again I'm wondering if you could patch it up well Jess is out his market again <laughs> I can't hear you Jonathan you can't. I can. You, we, we can. can. Uh, okay, I'm try, gonna yeah, back. Can try hanging up. Come back. Um, it's like, yeah, I don't look, man. I don't, don't ask no questions that you don't want answers to. I'm just wondering if you could fix, <laughs> fix up these I overalls. Mean, I suppose I can fix it. Yeah, you've done some work doing, uh, making, trying your hand at making some clothes, but a lot of what you've been doing is repair jobs like this one. All right. uh, so yeah, uh, Rohan hands you his trousers, his overalls, and there is a gigantic hole in going from crotch to butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! And this is why denim becomes invented. Last year, I was. Drinking fine wine and laughing with friends. Now I am repairing what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get started on that. Okay. <laughs> DL1 project, same as always. Um, would I have... Well, since I'm, I'm doing it for free, would that give me some generosity? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. Because I'm not, I'm not feeling generous about it at all. <laughs> No, this is this is your mentor's uh, partner, so yeah, yeah. You kind of you kind of got do a little bit of what you're told around here. Is there anything I can really add to this? You can get assistance from whom? You can try to get knowledge from Jess getting home. You can try to get assistance from Rohan, perhaps. You know what? Yeah, I want to uh, 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 ask. How does it keep tearing, actually? Where, what work does he do? That... Well, this would probably be like knowledge or something. Yeah. Mm. Well. <laughs> this is going to be a hell of a... Per I need a persuasion check. A persuasion <laughs> check? Okay. I'm not horrible at that. <laughs> How on earth do you keep tearing this? That's going to be a 13. That is not high enough to persuade him. Really? <laughs> this is a closely guarded secret. <laughs> uh, you could seek assistance from him in a, in a different way of like helping you do the stuff. Uh, he will not. You know what? Knowledge. <laughs> I'm just gonna have him hold down a seam for me while I work. All right. He will do that. 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and roll now, I guess. All right, yeah, you can do 2d6. Plus, I will say dexterity uh, and proficiency. Okay. Plus dex and prof. All right. Do you have good dex? I have very good dex. All right. I'm a flip wizard. Flip wizard. Flip wizard. Yay. So one of them is a two. The other, so that's... So a 13 altogether. All right. No, not a 13. What am I talking about? I got eight on my dice plus my dexterity. So that's 12 plus my proficiency. So 15. What am I talking about? All right. Yeah, no, you, you sew up those genes. Yeah. And you uh, think you've got it really six. strong and you're, he better not be able to rip this again. Yeah, one of them was a six, the other's a two. One was a six. So. Okay. Uh, yeah. Six means you get a boon. And I think the boon, the boon has to be cosmetic, but I think you made this stitch job look really good. Cosmetically. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's torn. Huh? It doesn't look like it's torn. Yeah, it doesn't look torn at all. It looks. It, I think it blends in perfectly. You could never even tell it was repaired. Fantastic. Never even tell it ripped. <laughs> I was about to say something. It still looks like there's a hole in it. <laughs> try, try ripping that one this time. Don't actually try to rip that. But all right, you know I was mean. gonna give it a go. <laughs> please, please don't. All right, thank you kindly, Caspian. Out, back to my work. Uh, my all right. Work. <laughs> And you lay your head down in your room as the sun begins setting. Uh, it's been some time. Uh, and that's it for some Session Zero Witchcraft stuff. Um, so we're done with that. And if you guys wish to, we can level up. Yes. And if you guys okay. really want to. We can touch on a little bit of we can we can step into our first adventure. I would like to. Yeah, let's do oh, that. I have to go in like forty minutes. Well that's still enough time. That's At least forty minutes. Uh do a quick level up to level three, everybody. Don't bother three. picking spells, you probably won't get to use them. I Level got three. A question. Unless you can do it quickly. Harper. Huh? I got a question for you, Harper. Yes. I had made myself an int bard. I'm going to go. Yes. And you had me roll. I forgot that it. fact. Okay. I was just checking. I was just checking. Because I felt like. It's done. It's more of a thing, yeah. you know. Roll health, add on oh, new yeah. features. My speed increases. Nice. Your speed increases. Oh yeah, because you're a monk. You gotta go fast. <laughs> yes, forty five forty five foot movement speed. Now I'm actually uh, I'm thinking like what do I want to go circle of shepherd? And just have like a whole bunch of like creatures to summon. Yeah, or there are, I go you have many options on the table. You have Circle of the Shepherd, you could do Circle of Rue from Fairy Fire. Mm -hmm. uh, you could do the Circle of the Moon, you could do Circle of the Lamb. It's all up to you. Yeah, yeah, that or Circle of Spores. So that I can have. Cool. Is that one canon? Mush yeah. No, I mean, is it in an actual book now? Uh, I have no idea. Let me check. Because I feel like Circle of Spores is unearthed Arcana. I think it got it officially released. Okay, I'm yeah, ready. Yeah, they're part of a Guildmaster's Guide. Guildmaster's Guide Ravnica. Okay, I do not have those books. That book. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm ready. I'm all set. Me too. All right. I can uh, yes. We're going. Um, I oh. just... 
do I'll have a question the later. Huh? I was going to take like the shadow one. Yeah, or you were going to take that one. So uh, that's in I Xanathar's. have that one. You can look up. Otherwise, you also get Song of Rest and Jack of All Trades. So like okay. all your proficiencies go up a little bit. The ones yeah. that you're not proficient in. Um, yeah. Uh, Jordan, you're good. Um, yeah. I have Andy, to uh, do multiple stuff. Yeah. If you, it looks like we have a little bit of time. So if someone wants to look at spells, they can do so. Um, cool. Yeah, I'm just because like, I'm not. I'm not really writing down all my main stuff. I just know that I've leveled up to three and rolled my health. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna pick Circle of Shepherds. Circle of the Shepherd. Awesome. Okay. So I can talk to animals. Me too. Yay. Very cool. Animals can well, talk. Well, I don't talk to them. They just kind of understand me. I can talk to them. Yeah. Also, All I right. have level two spells. That's still pretty cool. So, in that case, is everybody ready? I am. I just need to roll up my HP, but feel free to continue. I, roll your HP. Get it done. 2d8, buddy. Uh, you guys uh, are going to be level 3. Big jump. Big jump. But we're jumping into this adventure, and you got... Well, I guess there's nothing that says you need to be level 3. But you know what? It's a nice little present. I enjoy it. Thank you. I'm a big uh, fan of that. All right. So, uh, time passes... Some of you, you continue your apprenticeships, uh, working for various craftspeople. Um, others of you, you, you continue traveling. Uh, Ern makes his way out of Ahoy Hoy. Ahoy mm Hoy. -hmm. And one night, you're all relaxing. Caspian, you Caspian, you step outside to get some fresh air. Okay. Or uh, no, I I think you're yeah. You you step outside to get some fresh air uh, out of the house where you are staying. <sighs> you open the door, you close your eyes and take a deep breath. And you open it expecting to see the night sky under uh, over okay. Tapestry okay. Hills. And that is not what you see. You see no. you are on the steps of a glorious looking palace. It is still nighttime, and you see you have four other people with you. All of you are there. Oh, shoot. You see a yellowish uh, scaled turtle with a whole workshop on his back. You see a, a light blue skinned elf with purplish hair and a, a, a big old witch hat uh, and a hurdy gurdy. You see. Okay. What was it? You were a human, yes? A human with. Uh, mm -hmm pale green eyes and uh, cool hair cool very cool half shaved hair and very goth clothes um, you see uh, a wood elf in normal clothes with copper colored skin and all of you see all those other people as well as this uh, fancily dressed person with platinum blonde hair uh, dressed as a noble except for billy who does not see any of you <laughs> <laughs> billy you know that you are somewhere different where the air is sweeter okay. yeah uh the winds are a bit cooler and nicer uh and it generally just feels very different and you know it's not where you were a few seconds ago you all stepped through a doorway and now you're here you blinked and now you are all standing on the steps of a large palace with marble pillars standing like beech trees in a forest grove. The air is thick with moonlight and a 
heady treacly aroma. Mm -hmm. Ivy curls around the balustrade leading up to the main pavilion, and a nearby fountain bubbles with a faintly glowing liquor, the color of cherry, cherry blossoms. Everything around you seems to draw you closer. Hmm. I'm... I'm sorry. So, who... who are... more importantly, where am I? I don't know, it's something different. Yes, it is something different, isn't it? it smells different. Uh... You... you aren't wrong. I'm sorry, I had to believe for a bit. What, what's going on right now? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, you have... You stepped through a doorway. Okay. You blinked, you opened your eyes, and suddenly, surrounded by these people who you heard described earlier, this, these two elves uh, and these two humans with green eyes, uh, one fancy, one goth, one, oh god, we've made D&D &D the breakfast club. Uh, <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, That's great, I love it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and Ern is, Ern is Judd Nelson, or whatever his name is. Oh my god. You're the punk, Andy. Uh, no. <laughs> Smoke up, Johnny. Um, kills oh. a monkey? You just bought yourself another Saturday, buddy. Uh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, you are on the steps of a palace, a beautiful palace with marble pillars. Uh, there's a heady aroma, moonlight fills the air, and there's a beautiful fountain filled with cherry liquor. Okay, well, I'm just gonna quickly just look around at everything and everyone. Oh dear, I wonder if I ate some of Tanley's mushrooms again. <laughs> Breathe. What? Breathe. Hello? All right, I, I smell and see if he ate some of the mushrooms. I mean, it doesn't smell like mushrooms, but they don't have much of a smell. Okay. Not until you fry them up. A bit of butter. That's not Pork fat. I'm not a drug uh, expert. I'm not say no. I have a... Can I assume that I would have already cast Find Familiar? Uh, if you have the spell prepared, yes. Yeah, I do. Um, also, I would like it to be a falcon, but there's no stats for a falcon. Uh, you can use hawk or something. Can I use owl? You can use owl. Well, oh, owls cool. get like night vision and shit, man. Yeah, they don't have a special. No, they get uh, keen sight and and hearing. Actually, there is falcon. It's mixed in with hawk. Oh, is it? Yeah. Do I want that or do I want Hawk Falcon? What? What are you again, uh, Jonathan? A, a noble, basically. He's a human wizard. So he's oh, okay. going for falconry. Falcon is so good. Yeah, I'm gonna do yep. falcon. Falcon treats me right. <laughs> yeah, a falcon kind of appears on my shoulder. What the hell is that? This? That's Perry. Perry! Hmm. Is Perry Fey Fiend or Celestial for my own? What uh, is Perry is. Uh, I will say. Perry is. Uh, fiend. Whoa! Okay! Perry's got a little bit of. The tips of his feathers are red. All right, I was not expecting that. Very few people go with the fiend option. Okay, I like it. Damn. Uh, yes. So you guys are on the steps of this palace, and you hear, you hear the sounds, and you see the sights of a few people walking through that palace ahead of you. But yeah, none of you know why you're here, or how you got here, or where you are. That does not bode well. Um. I'm gonna start walking. Yeah, I mean I will too. Where are you? Oh, follow my blind friend. 
Okay. Yes. Where are you standing? Hello. Well, I don't know what's going on. I I don't know what's going on. Everyone seems to be going somewhere. So uh, Ern's just gonna follow peer pressure. You're just gonna you're just gonna go after them. Yes. Are you going to just stand here? Well, maybe. Why? Well, I don't know any of you. I don't know where I am. I was in the middle of drinking some wine, slacking off. <laughs> You're drunk. No. Sounds like a fun time. Am I drunk? This might be. You're not dream. slurring your speech or tipping over in vomiting, so I assume you are not drunk. If you are, though, I have various remedies that could possibly cure it or kill you. I wouldn't eat or drink anything here. But being drunk is fun. Wait, I just realized that there's a there's an entire fountain that shoots out cherry liqueur. Uh huh. Oh man, that's kind of wish I was playing an Irish character though. So, huh? Yep. Yeah. So, you say not to drink or eat anything here. Do you know this place? No. Then, then, all right. Keep your suggestions to yourself. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Damn. Um, can I do some kind of check to try and determine where we are? Uh, sure. Yeah. You can do history or something. I will attempt that. I'm not the best at it, but... May I do it as well? 14. Sure. I'm just going to uh, cut the middleman and just start walking up towards the entrance of the, uh, the palace. History, you said? Yeah. That's a no. 21. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Billy... You have a good idea based on what people are describing that you're elves. Uh, you have a good idea you might be in the wilds. Mm -hmm. You don't know how you ended up here. Usually, like, you'd think there's a bit more circumstance to it, but it would seem the circumstances allowed you to be here regardless. We're in the wilds. And I turn around as just to like, I turn around just to like, just to like, uh, when they said that we were in the wilds. Of course we're in the wilds. Where else would we be? Hey, Blondie. Uh, are you talking to me? Yeah. My Why don't you name? go drink some of that liquor over there? I don't think I want to. I cast enthrall. <laughs> wow. What does, that, um, what does that do? Um, make a wisdom save. Oh, you know what? Sorry, actually, everyone has to make a wisdom save. <sighs> okay. Creatures of your choice within that you can see. Oh, creatures of, oh, you have my choice. Yeah, then just Jonathan. Okay. Why are monks proficient in wisdom saving throws? This doesn't make sense. Because so. of key. That's caught. Because of what? Key. Why aren't they, though? Aren't. Oh, why aren't they? Oh, I don't know. Why is it strength and dexterity? So, uh, <laughs> assuming your save is higher than a nine, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So you have... You have disadvantage on perception checks made to perceive any creature other than uh, Grania until the spell ends. So... Go drink it. I'd go over and I'd cautiously take a sip <laughs> with my hand. Okay. Do you mind if I borrow a Link's Awakening and Rift of the Wild? Yeah, go ahead. They're right there. Um, yeah, you drink it. It tastes nice. Cherry flavored. What does it taste like? It tastes like cherries. Um, what do you get here? <laughs> everyone, and I'm, uh, have I reached at least the oh, entrance right. by now? Oh, no. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Have I reached the entrance by now? Because I'm just kind of cutting out the. Uh... What? I don't, I... Yeah, go ahead. All right, what did you say? Have I reached the entrance by now? Uh, yeah, you're at the entrance. It's not far. Okay, I'm gonna I'm looking back, and I see this uh this uh this blonde guy just dipping his hand into a fountain and drinking drinking like. I assume this is. I don't know what it is. I would. I don't know what this is. So I assume he's drinking something out of fountain. And I just shot back. Everyone, are we gonna go inside or we're just gonna stick around putting random things in our mouths? Cause I can do either. No, let's go inside. Get a vial of the alcohol. What was I? I want to get a vial of the alcohol. Uh, I, I see what you're do doing. Anything. It's just this. I, I, I get what he's doing. He's trying to reverse engineer the booze. Yeah. Um, I look back. <laughs> I just like, I just walk away. I just, I go up to the palace. All right. You guys begin walking up to the palace. Um, you step into this large palace and Okay, let me look at the stuff. Okay, yeah. You step into the grand foyer of this large palace. And you see there are a lot of guests. There's there's quite a few guests around. Uh, all of whom you can see are wearing uh, masks and clothing gaudy and elegant that make them seem almost like like deep sea creatures with lures on them. Beautiful, stunning. I'm trying to find the exact fucking description so I can describe it. There we go. Yeah, elaborate masks and atelier that make them look eerily like predatory deep sea creatures. Um, You see there are flowers blooming in the moonlight that fill the palace with dim bioluminescence. There are no torches. Uh, but there are some dim floating candles in the air in certain places. Uh, you see a masquerade ball taking place. Mm. And, okay. yeah. So you see Find a number of people. Yeah. Civilization. About how many footsteps are there? Like, can I guess how many people are in here? Uh, you guess, uh, the people in here, with, with your sense of things, I could hold, um, where was that? Um, there's a number of people, like, upwards of probably 30, 40 people, uh, maybe just on the grounds in general. Mm-hmm. Or in this room, maybe about 20. Uh, but you feel that there is something going overhead. And uh, you 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 feel like there are there is something maybe flying about. Things flying about. Smaller things. I'm having a hard time trying to perceive if any of this. <laughs> I'm so- like, well, look at this big empty ballroom. Did you Did you do something to me? Who? Me? You, you. I can only see... Focus on you right now. Okay. I think you're in love. <laughs> oh. I have that effect on I'm people. Love. Mm. Um, they, they wish. <laughs> I, uh... I'm going to turn to... How long uh, for all last? One minute. <laughs> <laughs> so all you're probably is, uh, just about good. Okay. I'm going to turn to uh, Cedric. That's your name, right, Jordan? Yes. I'm going to turn to Cedric and be like, what's above us? What is above us? You look up and you don't see much at first, but then you see a strange little creature uh, who looks like a cross between woman and bee uh, fly through a tunnel. Except Billy. Whoa. A tunnel in the sea. This place wild. There's this strange bee person 
up there. I, I don't know why. Be a person. Yes. Strange might okay. not be the best word. Are there musicians in here? Hmm? What? Are there musicians in here? There are some musicians. There's music being played. I'm going to go to them. This okay, is yeah, you get up closer and you hear it's kind of just general stuff and people mm -hmm. are enjoying the dancing. This is a pretty high end ball, yeah. Uh it seems pretty high end. Uh and you oh. see as as you guys are walking around, uh the the people in the masks at this party are all kind of looking at you with what you can gather as disdain. Hello. 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 Okay. Hello. I am going to change my appearance. Oh. Uh. So I stand out less. Okay. You know you can only change your body and not clothes. Yes. Yeah. All right. But I'm just going to try, I don't know, like try and stand out less. Okay. Uh, you see a lot of the people around here, they seem a bit more elvish, but more than elvish. Okay. Their skins tend to be in more uh, colorful hues. Yeah, they're, I'll go ahead and copy them. Yeah, they, they, don't, they don't seem like elves. They don't give off the air of elves. They seem more than that, a few of them. Like one has antlers coming from his head, a little bit small ones. Another, uh, her eyes seem to be a rainbow of colors. There are guards standing, watch, who dressed in green armor. Cool. Uh, you see a few particular people who don't look like they are elvish in any way. You see a number of interesting people. Who I'm going to share with you uh, in this particular room. Grand Hall, Grand Hall, Grand Hall. So yeah, you guys step into the Grand Hall, where the main party is, where the ball's happening. You see there's dancing, music, announcements, blah, blah, not announcements right now, where most people are mingling, and you see there's an opening to an open-air courtyard. But in this Grand Hall, the people who stand out to you the most... There is a, a woman with glasses and uh, who is wearing a mask, we shall say, of, an, of a very owlish nature. <laughs> a lot of purple going on. There is dressed more flamboyantly than anybody else. There is a, there's a fellow who seems to have just a rainbow of colors and other, other things going on with his costume. I love uh, him. All kind of rhinestones. He mads. He I looks love amazing. Him. Uh, and you see uh, a smaller person who looks like that <laughs> at that particular party. He's floating just off the ground and they have guards flanking them. You see also in this grand hall, there is where that person is standing. There is a throne. I'm trying to find where the fuck that is. Where the fuck is that throne? Where's that description of that? Oh, no, wait. Hello. Yeah, you Can't step through large oh. mithril and sylvan wood doors to see that, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you see their set of curved staircases leading up to an upper mezzanine. And you see, next to a lovely throne, there is a beautiful clock with a face wrought from polychromatic metal. Um, so this, guys, is Palace of Shade. And this adventure, you're going to have to mingle at a masquerade ball. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Oh no. I should be fine. I, I enjoy the company. I uh, start playing uh, 
a more lively harmony with the with the musicians. What okay, are you make doing? a performance check. That is a twenty-one. All right, yeah, you play you play some good music. All right. Uh, okay. Yeah, so you're playing along question. with them. Hmm? I have a question, but but yes. you finish this. No, first. continue, continue. Ask me your question. Um, no, I was gonna ask because like as a level three warlock, like I already like my my patrons are like set. Your what? The, my patrons uh, like are good, right? Yeah. Do you remember? I remember. Okay, but like, would I? Would it occur to me that they might be here? Um, it does when you see one of them come flying into the room. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, eh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, go link see, up with them. You see a small woman with uh dark hair. Uh she's like, Pox, come on, let's dance. And then she sees you and she's like, Ah <laughs> <laughs> I also scream. I'm like, ah like yeah. Uh, yeah, and you are grabbed places. and you're pulled into a, a closet. What oh, are great. you doing here? <laughs> she is flying, I, so she's standing at the same height as you. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I, I you just mean, what you don't know what you're doing. I went through a door and I'm here. Oh my god. Box! <laughs> and she says this even though they're in a closet and you hear a pop. And <laughs> her twin appears. <laughs> uh, who looks less... Uh, who has a slightly less happy face than her. She's like, what's the matter? Oh, God! <laughs> what are you doing here? That's what I said! It's like, they can't be here. They're... Okay, but here's the thing. I am here, though. So okay, How did you get here? Is it... I don't know! It's not... You can't just show up to our boss's party like this. this is... well, what can I do? Do you have anything like, I can wear? Oh, God. He didn't. He didn't. He did. He did. Oh, for God, I can't get... I'm just like, <laughs> just like a cat. I'm not allowed to do this. I'm pretty sure this breaks the rules. It doesn't. It probably doesn't break the rules. Talison can kind of do whatever he wants, doesn't he? <laughs> <It's Tallison. sighs> Talison is one of our acquaintances, and he said that there will be mortals who are his guests, and you are one of them. It looks like. Hey. Um, why? You know, I'm honestly not sure. He doesn't usually make a prank of morals. Okay, um, so I'm just gonna try, do you know how, I'm just gonna try and, like, blend in. And just yes. stay out of trouble, and then when this is over, you guys can help me get home, okay? Yeah, do that. No, and they're, like, grabbing stuff from this closet, and they, like, put a right. mask on you. It's like, there, like, try to blend in. Okay. Don't embarrass us. I won't. We cannot stress <laughs> this enough. Like, seriously. Like, you have, you know the okay. rules. Yeah. You know the rules? Mm -hmm. You got the rules. Mm -hmm. You got the rules. Yeah. You have the rules. Well, I, I, I saw one of the mortals outside drink. That's uh, fine. Everything, we know mortals were going to show up because of Talison. It's all safe. Eat, drink, have fun. Just like, don't. <laughs> Yeah, he's so in it. Kill the party. I, I did see it. Don't kill the party. Okay. Don't kill the buzz. Don't insult the monarch. Insult everyone else. We don't like them as much. But like, oh, you want me to. I mean, don't go out of your way to do it, but we're not going to be mad if you don't. And the closet like opens. It's like, excuse me. And, and like talks like grabs like something, like a boot or something. Get out! Oh! <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> oh gosh. This is fucking awesome. <laughs> Amazing right now, yeah. So so it's safe to eat and drink? Yes. I'm gonna go get so fucked up right now. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Just No, I'll be, be cool, cool, but like be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Man, I you love all those leave guys. the closet. Um, 
Uh, and you, you begin walking away, and you hear, <laughs> like, Pox, uh, Pox, ar uh, no, not Pox, Pilfer arguing with the man who she slapped with a glove. <laughs> you see the flamboyantly dressed man you saw in the grand, in the grand hall earlier. No! <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm gonna, like, chill with them as much as possible. Um... What would everyone else like to do? Does the situation reveals. Or ask I would like to just mingle with the people uh, dancing in the ballroom because, uh, you know, kind of need to get information about what the heck's going on. I don't think I've ever been in this area before, and I don't know if I'm either tripping or dying. Okay. So yeah, you're dancing. You don't know if you're tripping or dying, but you're dancing. No, I'm not even dancing. Not I'm even just dancing. walking just around. The floor, then. I'm okay. just walking around. Just being a nuisance. Hello? Uh, Hello? And like, I, Hello? I think eventually, like, after people ignoring you, one guy's like, he's just too polite for his own good. He's like, yes, what do you want? Hello, yes. Where am I? Uh, you're at the Monarch Spring who, Palace. Or is who is Spring the Palace? Monarch? I gotta double turn around. Hold on. Yes. Okay, I got it right. The monarch is the monarch of the fairy folk. Okay. They are that simply does not the end. monarch. Although I wouldn't expect a mortal such as you to know such a thing. That does not answer Honestly. any of my questions. I bid you good day, sir. All right. Yeah, you bid him good day. <laughs> Anyone have any qu answers to my questions? I don't know where I am, and I think I might either be on shrooms or dying. <laughs> so the bad news is that you are going to die. The good news is I'm lying about the bad news. I'm, uh, I, I suppose I'm just kind of standing there awkwardly holding like a flute of some kind of drink in my hand. I'm just looking around. Don't say anything. Don't make improper eye contact. Smile and nod. Yeah. I come up. I think you should heart. keep your suggestions to yourself. Excuse me. You're excused. Where are we? You seem to know. Do you? I, I know a lot of things. Oh, you're insufferable. I need to. I, I come up and take his arm and start to go dance. No, Be this careful. is not. Be careful. Okay. I begin to. I grab get... Cedric on the way. Okay. I'm pulling both of them to <laughs> dance with me. All right. You guys are I don't know. I don't know any of their dances. That's okay. Just do follow. We roll, do we roll performance? No, you're just dancing for fun. Okay. Yeah. Because apparently being a drunk person gives you proficiency in performance. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that will come in handy later. That's hilarious. Oh, my God, that's great. Um, this is a secret tool that will help us later. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, when the song ends, uh, can I tell that there are, like, hire like different people yes uh and i think you like see, do their shoes make different sounds or something yeah you you look let's be real guys we ain't here to talk to the fucking peon nobles yeah we're here to talk to the people who have their own goddamn picture all right yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um. uh you guys also notice on the upper mezzanine there are two more unique figures in addition to the ones I've shown you. The mezzanine up the stairs. There's a woman with pink skin and multicolored hair. And there is this fellow who appears to have four eyes. Oof. What is wrong with his hair? That is like too perfect. That's called a fade and a half, motherfucker. 
<laughs> that is too perfect of a right angle. It is too perfect of a right angle. It's impossible, yet it's happening. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Pox and Pilfer point out to you, uh, Granya. It's like, yes. that's Talison. Got it. Meanwhile. He's the reason you and all the other mortals are here. Mm-hmm. What's his deal? We don't know. <laughs> well, what do you know about him? He's... Besides that his hair rocks. I mean, he's... pretty ancient, and no one knows much about him. Like, don't get me wrong, we could give you the skinny on a lot of people here, but Talison, hmm. Keeps himself. Know. He's a trickster like us, but he tends to be a bit more malicious. This, this is That's strange. I want to walk up and introduce myself to, to Talison. Okay, yeah, you walk up to Talison. I re- I uh, remember my manners. I put on my noble swagger, and I I come over to... Uh, hello. Hello. My name is uh, Caspian Aloe Ferrofield of the Ferrofield family. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Uh... Good to meet you, Caspian Fellowfield. I am Talison Voss. They, them pronouns, or he, him, or she, her, depending on the time of day. I see. Uh, I have uh, I've never heard of the bosses. Uh, what does your, uh, what do you do? Uh, I do a great many things, but it uh, is unlikely uh, you've heard of the bosses. There is only myself. Oh, I see. Uh, and he, he, when he talks to you, there's something not right. What do you want? Why are you interrupting? What? Okay, yeah, throw it to me. Get, can you? Yes, please. Bye. No, okay, that's disgusting. All right. <laughs> um. Yeah, his his teeth seem to be a little bit too sharp for your liking. They're at the perfect right angle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I do not mean to sound um, foolish in any way, but I, I, I'm afraid I, I, I do not know where I am. Ah, that is understandable. You are in the Monarch's Spring Palace here in... Of course, the yes, the Monarch's Spring Palace. Yes. You've no doubt heard <laughs> tales of fairy folk. Oh, yes. I, I love the fairy folk. Good to know. Wonderful people. I'm glad uh, I invited you in that case. I'm racking my brains to remember what my... Storytell what storytell yeah. I've heard from my mom and my grandmother. Yeah. yeah. Just and one I, second. I, you've heard good, bad, you've heard all kinds of things. Um Well, I I never thought I would uh, meet any of you. Life is Life. full of surprises, my friend. Ah, yes. Very much so. Uh, Oh, this has been a lovely uh, gathering. Uh, uh, If it's not so rude, I... I I am terribly busy, and I, I suppose that I should be heading back. By all means, take your leave. Yes. Uh, how, how does one get back uh, to where I'm from? Hmm. Uh, 
That's a good question. I would start by exiting the residence. Uh, yes, how funny. Uh, well, thank you. You've been very pleasant. Uh, and you depart Taliesin's company? We do. All right. There was something I remember about saying thank you to the Fae folk. I just, I can't remember. <laughs> um, I'm going to take, um, what's your name again, Jordan? Cedric. Yes. I'm going to take Cedric and go up to the closest different footprints I can hear. Okay. Uh, so you are you are going to the next person you can find, uh, yes. but um, as as a small aside, uh, Caspian, you are leaving the residence. Yes, I am. I'm. Uh, you are attempting to leave. You're attempting to exit. I am. Uh, you are getting away from the palace grounds. And you get probably about a hundred feet away from the cat from the palace, and you feel something hit your face. Boom! Ah, almost like there's a wall there. <laughs> like, but it's just I like really it. strong wind, and you could feel, you feel you could get through if you push strong enough. Do you? Would you wish to try? Uh, yes. By the way, I have to right. go in like four. Okay, make a strength save. Oh, I'm great at strength. That's not bad. That's 16. 16. You are able... You, pushing your way through, you get five feet further. You can make another strength save if you wish to continue going forward. Five feet? Mm-hmm. Does it feel like it's going to ease up at all? Mm -hmm. I'll try it one more time. Oh, that's a four. All right. <laughs> I assume that's not good. You take two points of force damage. And as you try to push your way through and you feel this strange force even stronger, <clears throat> you are blasted back seven feet. too hard. <laughs> it's too hard. <laughs> hmm. I give up and I go back and I kind of snatch another glass from a server and I kind of sulkily just like drink it. <laughs> That's really funny. And you, uh, Cedric and Billy. Yes. You guys go up to, sure. we'll say, the glasses woman. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, hello there. Hello. Hello. You are Talison's guests, are you not? Yeah. I suppose. Well, Who's that? <laughs> I am Dr. Miriotti. Uh, she, her pronouns. <laughs> nice uh, to meet you. I'm sorry, what did you say? They they okay. announced themselves as Dr. Miriotti and that they use she, her pronouns. No, I meant Jordan. Jordan was I, saying. I said nice to meet you. Oh. And then hiccup. There we go. <laughs> any of you can step into someone else's thing at any time. Um, nice to meet you. I'm sure. So, um, hmm. how are you enjoying the party? The music is wonderful. 
Yes. It's been quite good, although... Oh, here they are. And you see, uh, being brought in by those... For those of you who can see or feel, uh, being brought in by those bee-like creatures uh, through tunnels, uh, you see three... Uh, strange things being brought in. One appears to be a crystalline statue of a mortal. Another appears to be an old tree with a face on it. And the third appears to be a platform that has a mini sun kind of thing on it. Those are what I was waiting for. I'm most interested to take a look at them. All right. Huh. They are gifts for the monarch from other lands under their domain. Who are we supposed to bring a gift? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Don't worry. I would feel bad if we hadn't. You're quite all right. Good, good. Are, are we the gift? If you're wondering if you're going to be eaten, no. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> Um, all right, I gotta go. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so, bye, Quinn. I'll see y'all later. I might be able to come back, but I don't know. Yeah, all right, let us know. Okay. I don't know how long it's going to take. Would the rest of you guys like to continue? Mm -hmm. I gotta be out in like 30 minutes to an hour. Mm -hmm. All right, and then Mads has to be done at four. So, I think yeah. with that, we're going to end there with the knowledge that you guys are now at a fey party and you cannot leave. It's rubbish. There's a, oh, it's, it's lit. Okay. What what's the food situation like? There are hors d'oeuvres galore. Okay, I would like to start shoveling hors d'oeuvres. You begin shoveling hors d'oeuvres. Yes. My character. Because if I'm going eating. to like stay here forever, I might as well get, you know, bang for my buck. My character's not gonna be eaten. There's food, there's drink. I think my character's sitting pretty good. All right. We're all um, having a great time. Yeah. We have we are having a great time That's starting blimey. out with Palace of Shame. Yeah. For a second I thought you were gonna say Palace of Shame. My name is not Whether blimey, it becomes the Palace me. of Shame is entirely up to your action. <laughs> Um, but with that, that is the game for this week. Uh, this is going to be fun. I'm excited.